Hi, my name is Jakub van Tonde, Advisor Services Director, and today I'm going to share some thoughts with you around the common problems advisors face when dealing with pensioners who are at the point of retiring in South Africa. The talk today consists of um, four components. In the first component, we'll share some thoughts around the common challenges that pensioners face all over the world and way, where that's coming from. In the second session, we will look specifically at living annuities and how you calculate income, how you review income, and why your income strategies actually matter a lot. In the third one, we will look at your living annuity growth engine, which is your portfolio, and some of the key objectives that you need to consider when you are constructing a living annuity portfolio. And then in a final session, we will share some thoughts on how growth and volatility combined need to be taken into account uh, to make a specific income annuity work and share some thoughts on the relative forces of growth and volatility and what that means for a living annuity investor. So let's get going on our first topic for today, which is the general problem facing retirees and pensioners globally. Now one doesn't need to go far to get an insight into what is happening in global pension fund systems. Financial markets, uh, reviews and newspaper reports all over the world are filled with headlines around doomsday scenarios, unsustainable retirement strategies, and people running out of money before they pass away due to longevity and, and, and advances in medical science. And these challenges are partly caused uh, not only by people living longer, but also in, in today's retirement savings environment, people no longer being forced to save at higher levels or high savings rates on a monthly basis. The old days of defined benefit schemes where people were forced to make large contributions to their funds are pretty much a thing of the past. In today's pension fund systems, everybody can pick their contribution rate and they can pick their portfolio that they want their assets to be invested in. We call that a defined contribution pension scheme. And one of the challenges with defined contribution schemes that we are seeing today is that people are just not contributing enough. And not only that, they're also not making the wisest investment decisions. And the combination of that is that a lot of people reach retirement thinking that they have saved enough to comfortably retire, when in fact that is nowhere near the case. And we see that play out when financial advisors deal with retiring couples or with someone who is at the point of considering retirement and the conversation pretty much goes something like the following. The advisor asks the client how much income they need before tax and how much assets have they accumulated that are supposed to generate this income. Then they do a simple sum. They take the income and they divide it by the assets that are supposed to generate this income and they get a percentage. And really based on that percentage you can very quickly figure out in what boat a pensioner is going to find themselves. If the percentage is less than 5, so the client needs less than 5% of their portfolio value as income, that pensioner is generally fine. They've probably saved enough and they will have a fairly comfortable retirement. It will take some substantial market shocks to negatively affect a retirement where the income need is, is less than 5%. And then you get the group where the income need is bigger than 5 and again, you almost really sit with two categories there. You sit with people who, and this is so unfortunate, but we see it so often, need a percentage income bigger than 10. That is unsustainable. There is no pension fund product in the world that will be able to sustain an income for someone at a 10% or higher level over a period of 25, 30 or 40 years. It just won't happen. And those people, unfortunately, have to fall back on other means. They have to rely on support from their family and friends. Um, and, and they are the unfortunate people uh, in society who, who will not have a comfortable retirement. And then you get the group in the middle. The third group in the middle is drawing 5, 6, 7, 8%. And I call them the tightrope group. And the tightrope group, it's possible to survive, but you will need to manage your retirement pot incredibly carefully. And what we will see in the follow-up discussions today is exactly how fine the line is that that pensioner needs to navigate and how the slightest mistake in how you calculate your income or how you construct your portfolio can mean the difference between success and failure. 
And we see quite a good example of this if we look at our own Investec Living Annuity book. When we look at our book, the average income is about 6%. But if you look at how that's broken down between the different income bands, you very clearly see this orange, red, and green group of pensioners manifesting in the numbers. Roughly about 30 to 40% of our pensioners on our book draw an income of 5% or less. And then you get a fairly sizable group of around 30% that are drawing an income in the region of 6 to 10%. And then you get almost 15% of the book that's drawing more than 10%. And these people are the people who have absolutely no chance of survival. In our second chapter, we're going to look at why drawdown strategies on living annuities are actually very, very important. Now, before we get into that discussion in more detail, I think it's important that we get on the same page as to what the pensioner puzzle is all about. The pensioner's puzzle really consists of three separate components. The first component is the simple one, that is the need. The need is for regular income that increases with inflation over a very long period of time, typically 30 years. The second component is really the financial planning component that the advisor has to manage. In this component, you have to deal with issues like longevity risk, so someone that lives their money. Uh, you would have to deal with the risk that a pensioner retires in a bear market. We call that sequencing risk, which, by the way, is very important in the case of income products. If you retire during a bear market, you will have a substantially worse retirement experience than someone who retires with the same amount of money but in a bull market. So that is a risk that needs to be looked at and needs to be managed. And the way that you manage that is through the way that you construct the return and the volatility of your investment profile. So that's the second block, the financial planning problem of managing the portfolio. And then the third block in the pensioner puzzle is what we call the, the, the psychology or the behavioral finance block. And in the case of a pensioner, it is a sizable component. I would argue that virtually half of what a financial advisor does for a pensioner is closer to counseling and psychology than it is to math and numbers and long-term returns. And it's all around the reality that a pensioner has no second option. If a pensioner's retirement plan fails, they will become a burden on society in some way. And for many pensioners, that is a thought that they are not willing to entertain. Therefore, when an advisor consults with a client around pension assets, there's a lot of psychology in the room. And that psychology can work for the good, or unfortunately, it can work for the bad if it starts affecting the way that the portfolio is invested. So as the investment goes through the investment cycle and you get booms and you get busts, the risk is that the pensioner psychology will start interfering with the asset allocation and the living annuity will be invested incorrectly. So the job of the financial advisor really is to manage these three blocks, the need for the inflation income, the need to manage the portfolio so that the client does not run out of money and at the same time dealing with the psychology of a pensioner for whom this is really the last assets that they have. Now the way that we proceed in all of the following sessions to test various hypotheses and various asset allocations and income strategies is, is that we run a model. And, and we run a model that uses underlying index performances going back to 1900. And these are index performances for all the major asset classes that you can invest in uh, in a living annuity in South Africa. That would be SA equities, foreign equities, SA bonds, SA cash, foreign cash, and foreign bonds. We've built the model to assume a basic fee for the product construction of about 1% and for the advisor, that's all combined. And we optimize the asset allocation to try and see what is the best possible outcome that we can find for a pensioner looking back over the last 120 years. And the goal is to protect the inflation uh, protected income for the investor for a period of 30 years. So let's use that model and uh, test a number of options for uh, income strategies for pensioners. Now on the graphic that's on the screen now, you, you will see um, a, a graph that has at the, on the horizontal axis a number of potential income options for a living annuity to start off on on day one. This is your starting income. 
So the scale runs from 2.5% on the left all the way to 7% on the right. And then on the vertical axis is the probability that that particular living annuity with that income that you're modeling uh, will fail to produce an inflation-proof income over 30 years. And then we have two lines on the graphic. The dark blue line represents uh, an income increase strategy whereby you increase your income with a fixed inflation every year. It doesn't matter what the markets have done, whether the markets have been down, they've been flat, or they've been up, the pensioner takes a full inflation increase every year. And if one looks at that graph, you can see that as your income, your starting income, goes over 5%, the probability of failure goes from 10 to 20 to 30, even to 50 and 60% rather rapidly. And it's quite clear that with that income strategy, one can't really afford a 6, a 7, or even an 8% income. You are basically gambling. The lighter blue line illustrates a different income strategy. In the light blue line example, we model the living annuity where the pensioner actually bases their annual increase on what the markets did the previous year. So if the markets were down, the pensioner takes no increase. If the markets are up, the pensioner takes an increase that's linked to what the market had done. And if the market was absolutely exceptional and had a really big run, the pensioner gets more than inflation, but gets capped at 10%. So it's a very simple strategy. The interesting thing is how much better that living annuity performs than the fixed inflation increase one. As a matter of fact, it looks as if you can start a living annuitant with almost 1% extra income on that strategy to get the same probability of failure as the fixed inflation increase. So the bottom line message for us from this graphic is that it's critical that you link the increases that an investor receives on their living annuity to whatever the portfolio had done the prior year. Don't just give people a fixed inflation increase every year. In our next section, we look at constructing portfolios for living annuities and we focus specifically on your growth engine. That is the component in the living annuity portfolio that is responsible for the long-term growth. That would be foreign equities and South African equities. Now, if we go back to our living annuity model that we used to test all of these different permutations, one of the questions we asked the model was to work out for us what was the minimum exposure that you needed to, to uh, both international and offshore uh, and South African equities at various levels of income in an annuity. So what you see on the graphic on the screen now is a graph that's got, once again, living annuities with different income levels on the bottom axis. And on the vertical axis, you've got the proportion of the portfolio for every one of those living annuities that should be in growth assets. Growth assets being South African equities, and international equities. Now the first thing you will notice is that the line rather rapidly goes from 30% at, at, at a 3% income. By the time you hit a 4% income it's about 45. And by the time you hit a 5% income you're at 75% in growth assets. That is an important point. A living annuity needs growth assets and it needs more growth assets the higher the income. Now this seems to be at odds with our phase advice framework, where when you test a client with a five or a 6% income requirement, you are very likely to get a result that says the client's conservative or, 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 or some other conservative style description, which might mean that a 75% equity is probably not appropriate, but the model says it is. It's the only way in an income product to sustain a high level of income is to actually have a high proportion of growth assets. That is the first important message. The second message is if you look at the split in the bars on the graphic between the domestic shares and the international shares. The very first growth assets that the model advises us to add to a living annuity portfolio is in fact offshore equities, not domestic equities. And the reason for that is because offshore equities are negatively correlated to South African bonds. So it should be the first growth asset in your portfolio. And as a matter of fact, you should pretty much have 30% in offshore equities in any living annuity, irrespective of what the income level is. And then as the income level goes up, you increase your growth engine by then progressively adding more and more South African equities to the mix. In the next graphic, we go back 
to our probability of failure. And, and so what you will see there, you have the incomes at the bottom axis again, and the probability of failure on the vertical axis. The light blue line is the line we had in our previous section, which is the failure rate for a inflation increasing annuity with a variable increase every year. And there you will see where under 5%, th those living annuities are fine. And as the income levels go above 5%, progressively your probability of failure goes up. Now the important point is that this light blue line, the portfolios were calculated as per our previous slide. So it's the high equity exposures that gets used at all of the income levels. The dark blue line, however, shows you what happens if you cap your living annuities at 40% equities. So if instead of going to 50 and 60 and 75% equities, you stop at 40 and you keep all the rest of the portfolio in fixed income, that's what you see on the dark blue line. And basically what that dark blue line tells you is you can't sustain an annuity over a 4% income with a portfolio that cannot go beyond 40% equities. You fail incredibly quickly. You've moved to 50-60% failure rates by the time that the income gets to 5%. So that is the key message. The growth engine is critical, especially for the higher level of income annuities. And if you do not put a higher growth engine in the portfolio, the, the, the fall off and the probability of failure is rapid and the results uh, can be quite dramatic. In our next section, we're going to be sharing some thoughts around the careful balancing act that is required when managing a living annuity portfolio. And that is the balancing act between growth on the one hand, and we've seen how important growth is, and you need real, real return growth in the long run to give a good outcome for an annuity. But you've also got the problem of volatility on the other side. And we know that with higher growth comes higher volatility, and the one pulls against the other. Now, the simplest way to really deal with this is to put that into the model and try and quantify what is the strength of real return or the force of the real return in a portfolio. So how much do you get in extra income for every extra 1% in return? And at the same time, we quantify what we call the force of volatility, which is what does your income reduce by for every 1% increase in your volatility? And we were able to quantify both of those using our model. Now, quite intuitively, for every 1% increase in the real return, you're able to pretty much get almost all of that 1% as extra income. Uh, it was about 93 basis points. And, and, the, and that sounds familiar, and people will um, agree with that. If you're able to increase the performance of the portfolio, that performance can go to, towards additional income. The fascinating finding for us, though, was that if you keep the, the real return the same and you change just the volatility of the portfolio, you, your maximum income also changes. Uh, and the rate at which that changes is roughly that for every 1% change in your volatility, you get a 0.3% less sustainable income. As the volatility goes up, your sustainable income goes down. Every 1%, you get a 0.3% less sustainable income. Now, now you must start thinking because uh, portfolio theory suggests that if you want to have more return, you've got to take more risk. That's what historical modern portfolio theory had taught all of us. What we're starting to find though, and, and more and more research papers in this regard are starting to come out, is that different styles of portfolio management, even though over time they produce very similar real return numbers, they do so at different volatility signatures. And a classic example of that would be the increasing number of publications that are starting to show that if you look at growth and momentum and value and quality styles of managing equities, that the quality style of management tends to produce a lower volatility portfolio without reducing the long-term real return. And now this must clearly illustrate that for a living annuity, there's value to be added by active managers on two areas. If you can improve your return and you can do so at a lower level of risk, an active manager can make a substantial difference to a living annuity portfolio. So let's look at an actual example. On the graphic you see the South African balanced fund sector. This is a scatter plot, the classic scatter plot we get 
uh, off Morningstar. And you have the standard deviation on the bottom axis and the returns, the real returns on the vertical axis. And this is the balance fund sector over 20 years. You'll see there weren't many funds. There are two Investec funds listed, Investec Managed and Investec Opportunity, and a number of competitive funds, as well as the sector average. Now, the interesting ones to look at, and there are probably two takeaways for us from this slide that's relevant to our discussion here. The first one is that Investec Opportunity Fund has a substantially lower volatility signature than any of the other funds in the sector. And it's done so whilst at the same time outperforming the sector on a pure real return basis. The second point we want to mention is that if you look at Managed Fund, and we're going to investigate Managed Fund further, Managed Fund has given you an, a roughly 1% extra performance compared to the sector average over this 20-year period. But it's done so at a higher level of risk. Now, if you were a capital growth investor and you looked at this graphic 20 years ago, if you could see had perfect benefit of hindsight, it would be a no-brainer to invest in Investec Managed Fund because that fund would outperform the sector average by 1% per annum and it would do so at, uh, at a level of risk which, which might reduce your portfolio but in the long run for capital growth really you're only interested in return. However, if you put these investment options in a living annuity, the force of volatility starts working against you and the picture changes rather dramatically. So what you see on this graphic is a 1 million rand living annuity that is modeled over the same 20 year period with a 4.5% income. And it's modeled with a number of different investment options inside of the living annuity. Now I want to focus your attention on the Investec managed versus the sector average lines. The sector average line being the orange one and the Investec managed fund being the green one. Now you'll remember on the scatter plot the managed fund beat the sector average handsomely by 1% per annum over 20 years. Yet in this living annuity illustration, you will see the managed fund portfolio finishes at a lower value than the sector average portfolio. This is a classic example of how the higher level of volatility that is present in managed fund in the last 20 years actually eroded the outperformance that the fund had delivered. So if you were a capital growth investor, managed fund was indeed an excellent investment option in the last 20 years. However, we would say that if you were an income investor, the sector average appears to have delivered a better outcome. So let's conclude our conversation. Retirement savings is a global issue and remains a problem in many countries in the world uh, and South Africa is no exception to that. And lack of retirement savings inevitably is a problem that no income product can fix for a pensioner. By the time someone gets to age 60 or 65 and they have not saved enough, no income product can rescue that situation. And that one should always remember as the key pillar to a successful retirement. The second point we made today was that if you're an advisor advising a client and the client requires an income of higher than 5% per annum, the alarm bell should be going off. And as the advisor, you need to know that your portfolio and your income strategies now become really, really critical. We discussed how the way that you review the income every year is now important. And you can make a substantial difference to a pensioner if you intelligently increase their income by referencing the investment portfolio performance of the prior year. You can make a substantial difference to the survivability of that annuity. We then looked at the need for a proper growth engine and we looked at actually how dangerous a 40% maximum equity portfolio can be if you are drawing incomes of 45 or 5% per annum. We also looked at the offshore exposure in your growth engine and how that has got to be for all levels of income in the region of around 30%. And then we concluded with the combination of volatility and real return and how active management in certain cases are able to improve on index performances and index volatility and the combined effect of better performance and better volatility means a substantially better outcome for the living annuity investor. Thank you.